Hi, it's Dr. Chip at Marsbury Science, doing another one of our GCC Biology Required Practicals. This time it's the Decay Required Practical found in the Ecology topic. We are going to investigate the effect of temperature, so that's our independent variable, on the rate of decay. We'll be testing a range of different temperatures, uh, 15, 30, 45, 60 and 75 degrees Celsius, and using an indicator that will provide a colour change so we can measure that to see the rate of decay. So let's first look at how we'll set this up. And while I set it up, I'll try and talk about some of the key aspects of this practical as we go. So first off, we, we've got a sample of fresh milk, uh, full fat milk required here. You can also use cream. So place some in here. Gonna use a syringe to measure out uh, a volume of milk accurately, we need five mil or five centimetres cubed of milk. Just check that's measured accurately. That goes into one of our test tubes. So we've got five millilitres of milk. We're now going to add some sodium carbonate to it. That is to ensure that the milk solution is alkaline. Uh, it's a 0.05 mole solution. Okay, so again, measuring out seven mil as accurate as we can using a syringe. So add that to the milk. We're then gonna add a few drops of an indicator called phenolphthalein. Produces a lovely color. So I've added five drops of phenolphthalein, just going to give it a good mix. You see we've got this lovely pink colour. So phenolphthalein uh, produces a sort of pinky purple colour when it's in an alkaline solution, uh, or a solution with a pH greater than pH 8.3. Because I've just added sodium carbonate to this milk, this solution is indeed at greater than pH 8.3, so we have this pinky purple colour. This milk is going to decolorise during the experiment, and we're going to be measuring the time it takes for that to happen. The reason this will happen is because as milk decays, it becomes more acidic. The lipids in the milk will break down into glycerol and fatty acids. And it's those fatty acids that are going to lower the pH down to pH 8.2 and below. And at pH 8.2, phenolphthalein becomes uh, decolorized. So we'll lose the pinky purple color. And that is, that is what we're going to measure as our dependent variable, the time it takes for that to happen at different temperatures. So we've now set up our milk with the indicator in. We are going to use an enzyme called lipase, which we're going to add uh, to our milk shortly. So you've got some lipase here. Often with lipase, you find it's got a lot of solid in there, so give it a good shake to resuspend it. And we want five millilitres, or five centimetres cubed of lipase. Again, just going to measure this accurately. So now have some milk uh, and our lipase enzyme. I'm going to place them into a water bath that I've measured to be at six degrees Celsius. I want to be certain that the liquids inside the test tube are at the correct temperature. I place my thermometer into the milk test tube, so I measure the temperature of the contents of that tube. And I need to wait for the contents of the milk test tube to equilibrate to 60 degrees C, which is my first experiment. While that's equilibrating, I think it's worth having a, a mention about the experiment. The experiment is all about decay. Decay is the result of microbial growth in foods. As microbes grow, they release enzymes to break down the food. Uh, they can then absorb nutrients in the food uh, to grow further. So the more that microbes grow, the faster they grow, the more of them there are, the more enzymes they're producing, the faster the rate of decay. So the faster the microbes are growing, the faster the rate of decay will be. I guess there's a little bit of a shortcut in this experiment. If we use microbes, it would take a lot longer. So we, instead of using microbes that are growing, we're actually using uh, an enzyme, uh, lipase, which is a model of the enzyme the microbes would be producing, and that would be breaking down the milk. So we're, we're using enzymes here directly, rather than using microbes just for, I suppose, for speed. So now that the milk has reached 60 degrees Celsius, we are gonna add the enzyme, the lipase, and measure the time it takes to decolorize the phenolphthalein because of the production of fatty acids. So I take one milliliter of my lipase. So again, 
Make sure it's well suspended. Give it a pipette up and down a few times. And take as careful as possible one milliliter of lipase. Add it to the milk tube. Quickly pet it up and down to give it a good mix. And hit start on our timer. This now needs constant mixing, so constant gentle mixing. Try and keep it the same at each temperature, so it's acting as a control variable. So you can see the pink color is starting to fade as the lipids in the milk is being broken down by the lipase. So the milk has now decolorized, the pink, uh, purple color has all gone. Hit stop on my timer and record that result in the table. Having done 60 degrees Celsius, you then need to repeat this experiment at 30, 45 and 75 degrees Celsius. We're also going to do 15 degrees Celsius by placing the test tubes in uh, a water bath but with some ice cubes to cool it down to below room temperature. Having collected all your results at different temperatures, it's ideal to then repeat the experiment so you can calculate a mean average of the time taken at each temperature. Once you've calculated a mean average of the time taken for the milk to decolorize at each temperature, you plot a graph with temperature on the x-axis and time on the y-axis and plot your data to find out the effects of temperature on rates of decay. Because this experiment is actually using enzymes, we're going to see very similar results to the required practical which we've done previously, uh, looking at uh, rates of enzymes. Lipase has an optimum temperature of around 37 degrees Celsius, so we should see the lowest time readings somewhere between 30 and 45 degrees Celsius.